The young legend out of Pompano and the Ravens took care of business against the Houston Texans. And watching Lamar in this game, he came in this game like he has something to prove. You know, like this game was a little bit personal for him. He wanted to use this game as a message to all of his haters and critics who say that he's a playoff choker, he can't get it done to the he can't get it done in the playoffs and use it as ammunition as fuel to motivate him to lead the Ravens to the championship. And all those people who made all these narratives about Lamar Jackson not being a playoff performer, they got to be looking really stupid right now. Because Lamar Jackson, he pretty much carried the Ravens in this game. Four total touchdowns, two on the ground, over 100 rushing yards, two passing touchdowns. Lamar Jackson pretty much said, F it, I'm going to step up and I'm going to get us this win. There was no way... Lamar Jackson was going to allow the Ravens to have another slip up in the postseason. They're going to the AFC Championship, and I believe that they're going to beat the Chiefs, and they should at least beat them by at least a touchdown or more, because this is the best team in the NFL. They don't really have any big weaknesses. You're going to have Marlon Humphrey and Mark Andrews potentially back for the conference championship game. You got a great offensive line. You got a great defensive line. One thing about the Ravens defensive line is that they don't have a lot of household names, but they've gotten a lot of production from everybody on that unit. Jadavion Clowney is having the best season of his career. Justin Matabuke is an all-pro pretty much. You got outstanding linebackers, Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, great secondary with Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton manning your back end. And your offense with these receivers, how well Lamar's playing, and Todd Munkin dialing up the plays, you expected this game to have the outcome that it did, the Ravens beating the Texans 34-10. to And I was really confident that the Ravens were going to cover that minus 9 point spread. Hell, I took the Ravens minus 13 in an alternate point spread, and there were Texans fans at the start of the week leading up to this game who had me a little bit convinced at one point that they possibly could keep it close. But when you look at their argument, it was all rooted on the fact that they had C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud has played at a top five level this year. But eventually, you're going to need to have a good enough team around a guy like C.J. Stroud to take down the team like Baltimore. Baltimore just had way too much firepower for the Houston Texans. Hell, their only touchdown came off a pump return. If it wasn't for that, they may not have even have gotten the 10 points. And at halftime, I was a little bit shocked that the game was as close as what it was. D'Amico Ryans was blitzing the hell out of Lamar Jackson. And that's what you have to do when you play Lamar Jackson. Because of how dynamic of an athlete he is. You just can't give the dude all day to throw the ball because he's going to dissect your secondary. And... If nobody's open, he's just going to make things happen with his legs. So the only way that you kind of can give your shot yourself a chance against Lamar is by blitzing them nonstop. And Houston's defense in the second half, they, they just unraveled. Lamar Jackson was just way too much for them to handle. And I'm glad I'm not a defensive coordinator having to go up against Lamar because I know it has to be incredibly frustrating Calling plays if you're the Miko Ryans. You got all the receivers locked up. And Lamar Jackson just starts making all these crazy runs on third down to move the chains. He had two really big touchdown runs that were critical for the Ravens. And Lamar Jackson in this game proved once again why he should win most valuable player. And he is going to win it for the second time in his career because he carried Baltimore on his back. He pretty much said, no, after halftime, we're not going to win this game. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we move on to the next round. And now we get Lamar versus Patrick Mahomes. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video saying how I believe that Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in the NFL. If we're going based on talent, we take accolades and Super Bowl rings out of the equation. Lamar Jackson is a more talented quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. It's not a single thing that Patrick Mahomes can do that Lamar Jackson can't do. But there's a lot of things that Lamar Jackson can do that Patrick Mahomes can't do. His athleticism, 
is second to none. Nobody. Lamar may be the most athletically gifted quarterback that ever played this game. He damn near runs like a 4-2-8, high 4-3. He has like cat-like agility in the open field. The way opposing players who go up against Lamar Jackson describe what it's like going up against LJ, they make it seem like it's hell on earth. Because you don't really know what to expect when you're going up against Lamar Jackson. He can either embarrass you by throwing the football, looking like the black version of Tom Brady, or he can put your ass on a highlight reel by juking you out of your ankles. It's really hard to stop Lamar Jackson. And the only reason why people have Patrick Mahomes over guys like Lamar, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow is because he has the championship rings. And you see too often... I hear these guys in the national media say Mahomes is better because he has the championships when championships aren't an individual accolade. Championships are a team accolade. You got to have a good team around you to win the Super Bowl. The squad that Lamar Jackson has is not the same squad that Patrick Mahomes has this season. And you can say Mahomes is a better passer than Lamar, but it's not by a huge margin. Have you not seen the way Lamar Jackson has been throwing the rock this year? He, this is the most effective that Lamar Jackson has ever been as a passer. And hell, even the year he won MVP, he led the NFL in passing touchdowns that year. Lamar Jackson has always been a great passer. The problem is that he never had the offensive coordinator that allowed him to demonstrate that ability. Tom Munkin has taken Lamar Jackson and turned him into an unstoppable force. And in the AFC Championship, we're going to get the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. And I think that it's only right that we get Lamar versus Patrick Mahomes in the AFC Championship, even though I wanted to see Josh Allen. But, you know, Kansas City, they're going to pull out all the stops. You can never overlook them. The Ravens are a more talented football team. And even Patrick Mahomes even kind of acknowledged that after the game in his post-game interview when they took down the Bills, and she asked him, you know, what's your early thoughts on the Ravens? And he said, you know, we're, we're going to have to play our best game. And Kansas City, you wonder how much juice they have left in the tank after an emotional game like this. You know, the Ravens, they're, they're focused. Beating the Houston Texans, they're not celebrating too heavy over that. You know, they probably celebrated for a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, and they're on to the next game. And this is the biggest game of Lamar's career because he's never made it to an AFC championship. And if he wins the Super Bowl, you're now going to start hearing people make the argument about him being better than Patrick Mahomes. And this is going to be a game where he's going to be able to show that. If Lamar goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mahomes and he outplays him, there's really nothing that... Nobody in the national media can say to downplay Lamar's success anymore. I, I get so tired of people hating on Lamar Jackson. It really frustrates me. It really irritates me to hear Shannon Sharp not giving Lamar the credit he deserves. Everybody needs a great team to be able to win. Okay? Like Lamar Jackson shows you he can throw the football. You're still calling him quarterbacky. Like what the hell does that even mean? Quarterbacky? That has to be one of the stupidest things that I've heard of this year. Like, Lamar Jackson, I can't wait for him to show everybody this week against the Kansas City Chiefs how good he truly is. And maybe it's a good thing that he didn't have to go up against Josh Allen. Because if he beats Josh Allen, everybody's going to say, well, he ain't go through Mahomes. And to be the man, you have to beat the man. Woo! In my, in my Ric Flair voice. And Lamar Jackson's going to have the opportunity to show us why he's the best quarterback in the league. For those of you guys who don't believe it already. But Mahomes, you know, I he's a dog. He's one of the greats. But Lamar Jackson, he's coming. The young legend on the Pompano. Make sure that y'all take y'all notes down. Lamar Jackson's going to win the Super Bowl this year. I, I've been saying it since before the season started that it was going to come down to either Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson was my preseason pick to win MVP. And I had some Steeler fans that got a little bit upset with me because of the praise I've been giving Lamar Jackson. But the praise I've been giving Lamar is nothing new. I'm not new to the Lamar Jackson fan club. I've been on the Lamar Jackson fan club since he was a true freshman at Louisville. And I'm also from the state of Florida. So I always have to support my Florida brethren. 
especially somebody who's somewhat from the area that I currently reside in right now. Why wouldn't I support Lamar Jackson? And why would people even want to hate on Lamar anyway? There's no reason to hate on Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson doesn't get in any trouble off the field. He's a great leader. His teammates respect him. If you say anything or do anything to Lamar Jackson, the whole entire Ravens organization is going to get on you and they're going to put those hands to you. So I, I really don't get all of the criticism that Lamar Jackson gets. Like I get that he's had some shortcomings in the playoffs, but you can't be a prisoner of the past. You have to take everything into context. It's funny how if Patrick Mahomes doesn't get it done against the Ravens, the excuse people are going to make is, well, Lamar Jackson had a better team. But nobody ever said that when Greg Roman was calling the plays. They never had a receiving core as good as what Mahomes and Joe Burrow have had in previous years until this one. Now you have the same amount of weapons around Lamar that guys like Mahomes and Joe Burrow have had. But the only difference is that the roles are reversed. Lamar has the better team and Patrick Mahomes doesn't. And imagine if Lamar Jackson was throwing to Tyreek Hill. Like Lamar Jackson has done more with less compared to guys like Patrick Mahomes. And he saved John Harbaugh's job. The only reason John Harbaugh still is in Baltimore right now is because of Lamar. Like, no matter if you're a Browns fan, a Bengals fan, a Steelers fan, you, you got to admit that Lamar Jackson is special. And just because you're a fan doesn't mean that you have to be biased against a certain player. And I, I live and die by this. The Steelers made a stupid-ass decision by not drafting Lamar Jackson. I wanted Lamar Jackson. I really did. And you know who we drafted over him? Terrell Edmonds. Still haunts me to this day. You know where Terrell Edmonds is right now? I don't know. That's the point. And what's the biggest problem with the Pittsburgh Steelers? We don't have a franchise quarterback. The Ravens, you know, the way they took care of business against the Houston Texans, it didn't look pretty at first, but I never doubted if they were going to be able to pull it off. I was just like, you know, they, they haven't played together in a couple of weeks. They're a little bit rusty and the Houston Texans are a little bit amped up, but the more the game progressed, the more the Ravens started to show us why they were the better team. They were getting after C.J. Stroud for all afternoon. The Texans couldn't run the football. They haven't been able to run the football for the majority of this year. But anytime they tried to run the football, the Ravens defensive line was automatically in the backfield. It was automatic penetration. ASAP. As soon as Devin Singletary got the handoff, he was met by either Justin Matabuke or Jadavion Klein or somebody else from the front seven. This is a complete football team. They have no weaknesses, and they're only going to get better because you got Mark Andrews and Marlon Humphrey coming back. Houston, I got some more thoughts on you later on this week, but I will say this. You definitely were probably the biggest surprise in the NFL this season. I didn't expect you to be terrible. I had you around six, seven wins, but if you would have told me you were going to win the AFC South over Jacksonville, win a playoff game, I would have said, I don't know about all of that. C.J. Stroud being a top five quarterback? Like, C.J. Stroud had the greatest rookie season in NFL history, better than Andrew Lux. He had less turnovers. He was more efficient. The Texans definitely have a bright future moving forward with what they have, not just from C.J. Stroud, but also the other young players that they have. Will Anderson, Tank Dell. So, there's a lot of young talent on this Houston Texans squad, which gives me a lot of hope that they're going to be in the championship picture in at least two more seasons. I think they're like one more year away from being able to compete for a Super Bowl. Once they get into 2025, 2026, they're, they're going to be rolling. And C.J. Stroud, he's going to be in that championship conversation. He's going to be in that MVP discussion on an annual basis like how Mahomes and Lamar are. Hell, he was in the MVP discussion for a good stretch of this season up until he got injured and he kind of had a couple of off games, but this was a very successful season for the Houston Texans. There were Texans fans who believed that this game could have been close, but you know, I, I didn't expect it to be close. The Ravens were just way too good, way too talented for the Texans to handle.